Assalamu alaikum, we will talk today about uh, the county surveillance. Uh, as you know, the patient safety component in, uh, include a procedure associated module, device associated modules, and other modules. For the device associated modules, we have CLABC, VAB, VAE, CAUTI, and dialysis events. And today, our we'll focus will be on CAUTI surveillance. CAUTI is the most common site for HAI or one of the most common sites uh, for HAI in acute care hospitals and some studies uh, reported up to 30% of all HAI as uh, CAUTI. Uh, the attributable mortality and morbidity uh, of CAUTI um, is probably less than uh, CLABSI and VAB but still considerable and it was estimated between 2 and 3 percent uh, and it means that people with CAUTI in uh, acute care setting have higher rate of mortality by 2 to 3 percent. It's a leading cause of secondary BSI because the uh, bacteria uh, 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 move from the, from the urinary bladder and other uh, urinary tract infection sites uh, to the blood causing secondary BSI, which is, uh, is, uh, has high mortality. Uh, the, uh, similar to other HAI, county increased the length of stay by at least one week. Uh, the cost is increased, uh, but we have to say also that the cost, the increased cost of county is much less than the increased cost of CLABSI and VEM. One third of antimicrobial, inappropriate antimicrobial use is caused by CAUTI, and this is very significant for the uh, MDRO and bacterial resistance. CAUTI surveillance. Uh, for definition of CAUTI, CAUTI is a UTI plus presence of indwelling urinary catheter for more than two days and the catheter is still in place uh, on the date of event or uh, the day before. Um, and for, for the UTI, it can be symptomatic UTI, which is uh, named SUTI, and asymptomatic bacteremic UTI or ABOTI. Uh, for uh, either one, plus the presence of indwelling urinary catheter, this is called CAUTI. And this uh, photo show you uh, the indwelling urinary catheter, which is uh, uh, a, a catheter that resides inside the, uh, urinary, uh, uh, the uh, urinary bladder uh, or drain the urinary bladder. And it, it, it is inserted through the urethra and is connected to a collection bag. So, indwelling urinary catheter is a drainage tube that is inserted into the urinary bladder through the urethra, urethra uh, is left there. That's why it's called indwelling and is connected to a drainage bag. Uh, these devices are also called Foley's catheter. Uh, however, this is different from other devices that deal with the urine, like condom or straight in and out catheters, are not considered uh, Foley's catheter. Uh, because it's not residing inside uh, the urethra uh, and connecting the urine from the urinary bladder to the collection bag. Uh, other types of uh, uh, drainage of urine like nephrostomy, tubes, uh, ileoconduct or suprabubic catheters, uh, they are not uh, considered Foley's catheter. Again, Foley's catheter is the only shape that you saw in the previous slide pass uh, through the urethra, uh, drain the urine from the bladder to the outside through a collection bag. Whatever tubes that you use to drain the urine outside this passage is not called indwelling urinary catheter. Indwelling urethral catheter that are used for intermittent or continuous irrigation are including in county surveillance. So the key point here in dueling, in dueling urinary catheter. So for the surveillance methodology of uh, CAUTI is, is very similar to other uh, device associated uh, infection. And as you see, uh, it is active, patient-based, prospective, 
priority directed or targeted and yield risk adjusted incidence rate so just uh, uh, a clarification of what does it mean this surveillance methodology it has to be active means that you're looking actively for the events events here is county events inside the unit under surveillance and it's patient based which means that you need to collect information about the patient symptoms uh, and, and, and it's not only lab based which is dependent on uh, presence of bacteria uh, inside the urine so it is not only urine culture but there is other information you need to collect about the catheter and about the patient symptoms prospective means that you need to start the surveillance while the patient is in the hospital and catheterized uh, you cannot do this backward uh, otherwise it's retrospective uh, priority directed or targeted which means we cannot cover all location that has patients with urinary catheter but rather we choose certain location based on a risk assessment plan usually before the beginning of the year that uh, uh, state the location the duration of surveillance and different types of surveillance including county so we don't cover universally all locations that has patient with catheter but only the uh, priority directed which means risk assist uh, higher higher priority based on the risk assessment or targeted it is a specific unit that we target in the surveillance yield risk adjusted incidence rate so we don't uh, we don't count the rate of county over patient day, patients but uh, rather over uh, sen, uh, urinary catheter days so our rate is uh, expressed per 1000 urinary catheter days so this adjusts for the duration of catheterization which is the major risk factor for developing uh, county also we um, report the rate by different units so we report the rate for ward for a neuro uh, surgical uh, icu for medical surgical icu and so on so this stratify the rate by the uh, location which is risk adjusted again so risk adjusted means the rate is adjusting for the duration of catheterization and adjusted for the different locations in the hospital or the risk in different locations in the hospital so county surveillance is done in uh, in patient location so it can be done in icus different icus can be done in specialty care areas can be done uh, for inpatient uh, ward uh, but it cannot be done in outpatient locations including er uh, or uh, uh, outpatient or and uh, outpatient clinic uh, classically saying uh, county surveillance can be done in neonatal icu but usually uh, in dueling urinary catheter is rarely used in neonates uh, that's why uh, county surveillance practically uh, are not done in, in neonatal ICU uh, and usually if you want to do it you should do it uh, out uh, of plan uh, which means you do it for yourself but not for uh, reporting nationally or benchmarking or something like that because as we said uh, for neonates it is uh, rarely used so no way no uh, good reason to make uh, county surveillance in patients without uh, prevalent uh, use of uh, urine, uh, enduring urinary catheter. The date of event similar to the other device associated uh, infections is the first, the date of the first symptom uh, or diagnostic test. Diagnostic, diagnostic test here is the, uh, the um, positive urine culture. So it is a symptom or diagnostic test positive urine culture. It is the first element to use the criteria within the window. You have a seven day window, the first symptom uh, or the first element, sorry, either symptom or positive urine culture uh, is used as the date of events, date of event. Uh, as other device associated, uh, if patient reside in a certain unit, ICU or a ward, and develop the uh, county event uh, then this county is attributed to the location where the patient is residing during diagnosis of county uh, however we cannot attribute county to outpatient locations including outpatient 
او ار بوست انستيجيا انستيجيا كير يونت ريكفري روم اي ار اوت بيشنت كلينكس بيكوز وي دو نوت كوليكت يورينري كاثتر دايز اوت سايد ذا ان بيشنت لوكيشنز سو اف اف ذا بيشنت ديفلوب كاوتي ان ون اوف ذيس لوكيشن ذن موف تو انذر لوكيشن وي شود اتريبيوت تو ذا نيو لوكيشن ان بيشنت لوكيشن Uh, the uh, exception for this location of attribution is the transfer rule. The transfer rule is simply if the patient move from one inpatient location to another inpatient location, uh, uh, or from outpatient to uh, to inpatient uh, inpatient location, um, how we attribute the event? If the event date of event is on the first day of transfer, or Uh, the day after, then you attribute it to the first location, as long as the first location is inpatient location. Uh, but if it develop on the third day of transfer, considering the day of transfer is day one, uh, then it belongs or attributed to the second location. If you have multiple transfer uh, to more than one location on the same day, county is attributed to the first location uh, uh, on uh, the, uh, the first location in which the patient reside the day before county date of event. So you go back backward one day and look for the first location where the patient was residing uh, overnight in this location to attribute uh, in case of multiple locations. So here the patient Uh, uh, in May 24 was in unit A, in May 25 is transferred from unit A to B, then B to C, and stay in C, uh, on 26 they move to unit D and develop uh, county, and this is the date of diagnosis for county. So you go back word one day, so the county diagnosis was in May 26, you go back on May 25, and attributed to the first location where the patient was residing overnight, which is unit A, because he was in unit A in 24 and 25. So this patient attributed into unit A. For the, for the county updates, uh, we have uh, several points to cover, including the seven day infection window period, date of event, present on admission, HAI including transfer and multiple transfer, 14 day repeated infection time frame, urinary catheter removal and reinsertion, secondary BSI attribution period, uh, pathogen assignment guidance, use of non-culture based microbiologic testing methods only on ABOTI or uh, asymptomatic bacteremic uh, UTI. Uh, there is a specific county changes that we need uh, to cover here. Um, the urine culture has to be more than 100,000 or sometimes written as 10 to the power of 5 CFU per mil only. Uh, if you don't have a culture in the urine that indicate this amount of bacteria, then its colonization is not considered against the uh, county definition. Bacteria is the only acceptable causative organism. Previously, they were allowing for candida to be causative organism for, for uh, county, but obviously candida is, uh, uh, is contamination for the urine and rarely to, uh, does not, is not allowed to be one of the organism causing uh, county. But We, uh, we, we are okay if we have one bacterial pathogen and candida. So if candida is not the only one and there is uh, one, at least one uh, bacterial species, uh, we will allow this as a, a county. Uh, we don't have a specific county list for pathogen. Uh, Abuti, which is asymptomatic bacteremic UTI, Uh, pathogen again list is gone. Uh, no need to look for urine analysis. Previously was allowed in the in definition. Core temperature are no longer needed. Any temperature that is measured by urine institution, uh, as long as it is universally uh, accepted 
uh, measurement for temperature is used. You don't have to convert the core temperature to regular temperature, mouth temperature, or axilla temperature to mouth temperature. Any temperature that you see in the documentation you use right away. Catheter that is removed and reinserted during the same uh, day, uh, you continue count uh, as usual. If uh, in the next day and there is no one full calendar day without a catheter, again, you still continue counting as usual, as if there is no catheter removal and, and reinsertion. But if, if the reinsertion had been after a full calendar day, without a urinary catheter in place, then you start over counting uh, from one again. So here the patient uh, uh, was, uh, the urinary catheter was removed in uh, April 2 and in April 3 uh, was replaced again. So here continuity uh, of the catheter days and you continue counting. Uh, as you see, day three is March 20, 31 day four, five, six, seven, up to uh, day eight, removed on April five. In this example, you, as you see, the catheter was removed in April two and reinserted uh, or replaced on April four. And here you have uh, April three as full calendar day without full catheter. So you have to start uh, uh, for, uh, um, start over on April 4 as fullest catheter day 1 and so on. For UTI repeated infection time frame, uh, as in uh, CLEPSI VAB, uh, it's a 14 day time frame, day of event is day 1, so 14 days where you cannot count another UTI or consider another UTI uh, uh, as a new infection, uh, specifically two types of uh, criteria that we have or types of I, uh, UTI, uh, symptomatic UTI and asymptomatic bacteremic UTI. Additional eligible pathogen that is are retrieved that are retrieved during from the urine culture during the 14 day is just added to the primary event. The original date of event is maintained. No a change uh, of date of event during the RIT. Do not a change device association during RIT. So if the catheter removed, you cannot say it is UTI. If the catheter is added during the RIT, you cannot say it is CAUTI. So the primary diagnosis is kept without a change during the repeated infection time frame. Any UTI criterion set an RIT, irrespective it is CLEPSI, uh, CAUTI or not. Uh, so uh, to, to name this as uh, CAUTI, you have to have catheter for two days, more than two days, and to name this as uh, HAI and not uh, present in admission, uh, again, you have to have two uh, two, uh, uh, more than two days uh, in uh, hospital admission. For the secondary B BSI uh, attribution period, uh, it is the period in which uh, any positive blood sample that have a matching organism to the organism uh, detected in the urine uh, uh, this is called the secondary BSI and it's not reported as a primary uh, BSI. And as we know, the secondary BSI could be between 14 and 17 days, 14 days, which is exactly similar to the uh, RIT or repeated infection time frame when the date of event is in the middle of the uh, uh, of the window, but if the date of event, uh, uh, the beginning of the window, but if the date of the event is in the middle of the window, as happened for the urine culture, um, then it is 17 days. Organisms that are not acceptable for uh, county are uh, uh, commensals for the urine. Uh, so urine flora, mixed flora, something like that is not acceptable. Uh, organism that cannot be meet the county definition is candida uh, species or any yeast not otherwise specified, molds, uh, dimorphic fungi or parasite. 
all these are not acceptable uh, organism for uh, candida uh, for for county remember that candida can be acceptable if there is additional uh, bacterial pathogen uh, but candida alone is not acceptable as similar to other hai community associated fungal pathogens are not allowed these include uh, blastomyces histoplasma and other uh, fungal pathogen why they are not considered for HAI? Because usually they are community fungal infection with long incubation period and you rarely see in hospital. And if you see in hospital, most likely they are uh, uh, caught from the community. And since it has long incubation period, they are discovered in the hospital. So they are not suitable for or organism for HAI in general, including county. For the county criteria, we will discuss now. Uh, the first one is symptomatic UTI. Here you have to have a patient who has the following three items. First item, they have a catheter. It has to be indwelling urinary catheter that is in place for more than two days. And the catheter is still present inside, yeah, I mean inserted during the day of event or removed on the day of event or the day uh, before so in this case you still uh, associate the event to endowing urinary catheter it can be considered county since we say symptomatic then we have symptoms the symptoms include fever suprapubic pain or tenderness cost of vertebral angle pain uh, or tenderness urine frequency urgency and dysuria and the third item, the patient has a urine culture with no more than two species of organism. So more than two species will be considered as a contamination. Uh, so no more than two species of organism. At least one of them is bacteria. Both are bacteria fine. One is bacteria and one fungi is fine but the uh, baseline that this bacteria the, the single bacteria uh, that you want to use as the pathogen of the uti uh, has to be present in a concentration in the urine more than 10,000 uh, 100,000 cfu per mil which is usually written uh, equal to or more 10 to the power of 5 cfu per mil so you have three items you have the catheter either in place or just removed it today or the yesterday and the catheter has been in place for more than two days and you have one of the symptoms fever and the rest of the symptoms and you have urine culture positive um as we as you as you see in previous slide um, the frequency urgency and dysuria cannot be in a patient who has the catheter in place so for the patient to have catheter in place the only available symptoms for county is fever suprapubic pain or tenderness costovertebral angle pain or, or tenderness again for the patient who has no catheter in place can we diagnose county without with, with a, in a patient without catheter in place yes just we said before uh, the 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 county can be diagnosed when the catheter was in is not in place, but it was just removed before the start of the symptoms on the same day or the day before. Uh, so in this case, you have additionally urinary frequency, urgency, and dysuria can be added uh, to the rest of the symptoms. Uh, so you have now six symptoms available rather than three in patients who have the catheter in place. The symptomatic UTI we have just described in previous slides is concerned with any age, um, but for for um, uh, patients one year or less, uh, here we know that the symptoms are quite different from um, uh, other patients. So uh, the if we look at the symptomatic UTI in a patient in the first year of life, we'll see the same definition, exactly the same definition as uh, we described before, but only uh, the symptoms are different. In instead of suprapubic tenderness or pain, only tenderness is allowed. Uh, costovertebral angle pain or tenderness cannot be described, so they are removed. 
uh, frequency urgency and dysuria again the infant cannot talk so it is removed so what are the rest of the symptoms fever is still the, the same as we said before uh, even in CLEPSI criteria two or three uh, sorry criteria three uh, we described that the fever hypothermia apnea bradycardia are the symptoms of accepted for uh, criteria 3 LCBI and it's also the symptoms uh, acceptable for symptomatic UTI in infants in the first year fever hypothermia high high temperature low temperature apnea stopping of uh, respiration bradycardia uh, uh, which is um, uh, slow uh, heart rate uh, added to the symptoms lethargy vomiting and suprapubic tenderness since tenderness can be elicited by the physician so it is added here so uh, the only difference in symptomatic uti in the first year uh, rather uh, other than the, the described classic symptoms of uh, uti is the presence of uh, fever uh, sorry hypothermia apnea bradycardia lethargy and vomiting you have also suprapubic tenderness but pain is removed because the infant cannot talk So the second version of UTI is asymptomatic bacteremic UTI or aboti. Here you do not have symptoms. And previously in the previous versions of this definition, uh, and um, uh, this was a change recently in the last two years, um, they were allowing for fever in old age because it's very common in uh, patients above 65. Uh, and still consider this as asymptomatic but now they asymptomatic means asymptomatic so no symptoms including fever in any age group so you here uh, have patient without any symptoms the patient still have the catheter uh, is, uh, inserted in dueling urinary catheter inserted for more than, for more than two days and the catheter was removed or uh, with the catheter is in place or removed on the day of event or the day before so the the catheter part is exactly similar to symptomatic uti the urine culture part is exactly similar to the symptomatic uti so you have to have positive urine culture no more than two species of organism and at least one of them is bacterium uh, to the level of more than 100,000 uh, equal or more hundred uh, equal uh, or more than 100,000 CFU per minute. So the urinary catheter part, the uh, positive urine culture part is similar. What is different? Instead of having symptoms, you have no symptoms at all, uh, but you have a matching blood culture, blood uh, blood culture with the same matching organism that was collected in the urine so if you have this case then you have asymptomatic no symptoms at all including fever including fever in any age including fever in old age so you have no symptoms at all but it is a bacteremic one as well which means you have in addition to the positive urine culture so if you have positive urine culture with e coli you have positive blood culture with uti but remember the blood culture for UTI, you don't have to have a criteria for the amount of organism. Any amount of organism is fine. Uh, so we don't care about how much uh, E. coli in the, in the blood. But for the urine, you have to have E. coli more than 100,000 CFU per mil. Uh, and uh, for, uh, of course, all this criteria has to happen within the infection window. Here we have some comments about the symptoms of symptomatic uh, UTI. Uh, for suprapubic tenderness, it is elicited by the uh, physician. They do palpation. The patient shows signs of discomfort or pain. Uh, and also can be a, a complaint. Obviously, in adult patients, they can uh, complain of suprapubic uh, tenderness. It has to be documented in the patient the chart and has uh, not to be related to another uh, or described to another disease. Uh, additionally, you have pain or tenderness of uh, uh, pain or tenderness of subarachnoid region or costovertebral angle. 
should be without other recognized cause, should be without other, for example, uh, cost of vertebral angle tenderness uh, or pain is very common uh, during uh, menstrual cycle, uh, can be uh, related to regular uh, back pain uh, in, in some patients. So this way cannot be considered towards the symptoms of cavity. In, in uh, infants in the first year, we have apnea, bradycardia, lethargy, vomiting, and suprapubic tenderness. Uh, again, should be all without other recognized cause. So uh, all the symptoms that we're describing in, in this slide has to be without recognized other cause. Yani we cannot describe uh, these symptoms as part of another disease. So we call it one of the symptoms of cauti. Generalized low back pain shouldn't be used to interpret cost of vertebral angle pain or tenderness. So the patient say, I have low back pain, where in all uh, in, the, in, the, in the back cannot be identified in the cost of vertebral part. So this, this is not considered cost of vertebral angle pain or tenderness. It has to be very localized in the area of cost of vertebral uh, angle. Uh, similarly, generalized abdominal pain cannot be used instead of suprapubic tenderness or pain uh, because, again, it's a very uh, general term and wide area. We need on, only on the suprapubic region. So pain has to be localized in front in the suprapubic region on the back on costovertebral angle. Uh, uh, sentences like low back pain or back pain or abdominal pain is not similar is not similar or considered as cost of vertebral angle tenderness or suprapubic tenderness a fever uh, is an unspecific symptoms or hypothermia also uh, and cannot be excluded from uti because it is thought clinically to be caused by another uh, cause and this is different from uh, all previous symptoms so we said costal vertebral angle tenderness or pain, uh, suprapubic angle tenderness or pain has to be not uh, uh, explained by another disease. But for, for, uh, for fever, we will consider fever all the time. Uh, even if it is thought to be clinically related to another infection, we cannot ignore it or remove it from UTI because fever is a non-specific symptom. It's not is specific to cavity, it can be with any other infection. So once fever is detected or hypothermia is detected, you should record it as one of the symptoms of cavity. It is possible that the individual may have fever due to more than one infection at a time, pneumonia and, and UTI. So it is it doesn't make sense, you exclude it. That's why we said we will consider fever irrespective, it is caused by another uh, or thought clinically it is related to uh, another infection. Um, so fever is excluded, uh, is not excluded from cauti even if it is caused by another infection. This is only for fever and because fever is an unspecific uh, symptoms, not uh, only for uh, cauti. Frequency, urgency, and dysuria can be used when the urinary catheter is not in place, as we said. Uh, and this is happening only for short duration because we cannot diagnose a cauti unless the catheter was, if the catheter is not in place, it has to be removed uh, on the day of the symptoms or the day before to consider frequency, urgency, uh, or dysuria. Secondary BSI caused by cauti, you have two things here. You have symptomatic UTI and asymptomatic bacteremic UTI. For symptomatic UTI, you have a urine culture that is culture only. We cannot use uh, non-culture methods. And it has to be in the infection window. Uh, and it has to be more than uh, equal to or more than 100,000 safe uber men. For the blood culture, it has to be collected during the BSI attribution period, which ends with the 14, day 14 uh, from the date of event. Uh, so any positive blood culture that has the same organism as the urine organism that you use for diagnosing cauti will be considered secondary BSI. And remember, it is allowed for the blood culture to be 
uh, using cultural or non-cultural method, uh, but for urine, since you need a specific concentration of the organism, it has to be culture only. Uh, what we're what we giving you in this slide is only for symptomatic UTI. However, for asymptomatic bacteremic UTI, any positive culture that was collected during the window, as we described in Abuti, is considered secondary BSI by default because two things. It is one of the criteria to meet the uh, definition of uh, abuti as well as it is collecting during the window so it meets the scenario two for uh, uh, secondary BSI. So secondary BSI can happen after symptomatic UTI but the positive blood culture has to be within the BSI attribution period which extends to 14 days from the date of event. And in the asymptomatic bacteremic UTI there is a secondary BSI which is the positive blood culture, which is part of the criteria. Yes, it's part of the criteria, but you cannot diagnose it as primary BSI. Some comments about the urine culture organism and so on. Mixed flora. So the majority of urine culture recover one pathogen, but if more than two uh, species uh, are, are identified in the same culture, we will consider this as uh, contaminated urine. Uh, acceptable positive urine culture should be no more than two species. More than two species uh, cannot be used to uh, towards the criteria of cauti. Culture with Pseudomonas aeruginosa and Providentia, for example, are two species. Culture with E. coli, uh, Enterococcus, and Proteus are three species. Uh, so for three species we cannot we cannot use for cauti and we will consider this as contamination or colonization. Uh, MRSA and MSSA is still one species. Why? Because it is uh, staph aureus. One of them are resistant. One of them are sensitive, and we do not uh, in 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 matching organism or uh, number of species in cauti. We don't care. We don't care about the resistance pattern. We care only about the name of the genus and the species of the organism. For the urine collect collection, uh, urine uh, culture must be obtained using appropriate techniques such as clean catch collection or uh, catheterization. Why we should use clean catch or catheterization? Because we want to avoid contaminated urine. So you know of the, the perineum has a lot of uh, um, commensals and the urine can be easily contaminated and in this case you will find more than two species of organism and will be discarded uh, and will not use for cow T definition. A specimen from endowing urinary catheter should be aspirated through disinfected sampling board and not yeah yeah the catheter itself has a, a, a additional board for aspirating the urine. You have to disinfect this board and then collect the urine. Uh, in infants, urine culture should be obtained by bladder catheterization or suprapubic uh, aspiration. Positive urine culture from the bag specimen are unreliable and usually contaminated and should be confirmed by specimen aseptically contained by catheterization or, or suprapubic aspiration. This is an in infant. Uh, urinary catheter tips should not uh, be used for culturing and we don't uh, recommend this. In cauti or in clapsy, so we don't culture the tip of the catheter because it's usually uh, contaminated and it's not acceptable for clapsy or cauti. Urine specimen for culture should be processed as soon as possible, preferably within one or two hours. If you are going to stay longer, you have to keep it uh, in the refrigerator within 30 minutes to avoid um, uh, like uh, um, multiplication of organism and appearance of contamination, refrigerated specimen should be cultured within also 24 hours. So uh, the rapid processing to avoid a growth of uh, contaminants and, uh, and, 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 and identification of more than two species of organism. When you collect the denominator uh, for cauti, um, you can have uh, daily manual uh, collection when you, co you count the number of patients uh, in the unit and the number of patients with uh, individual urinary catheter. 
collected on the same time every day for the whole month uh, and uh, this should be collected by other staff not the ICP uh, after training them uh, in addition to the manual collection for uh, uh, denominator and county surveillance, you have uh, other two options, either collect, uh, electronic uh, collection or weekly sampling. For the electronic uh, collection, it should be validated uh, against the manual collection for three months, uh, consecutive month, and then you calculate the rate using both methods, and if it is not different by 5% higher or lower, so you can use the electronic method rather than the manually collected method. The other option um, is weekly sampling. Instead of collecting the manual way, uh, you, you can collect uh, once a weekly or uh, reduce staff time estimating the indwelling urinary catheter. It can be used in ICUs or ward relocation with an average more than uh, 75 ICU days per month. So smaller units is not suitable for the weekly uh, sampling. Uh, and usually you uh, avoid days like uh, Saturday or Sunday uh, because they are the least accurate uh, estimates of the denominator. So the middle of the week is a good way. So you choose uh, one day in the middle of the week, like Monday, um, Tuesday, uh, th Thursday, sorry, Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, and you uh, times this in seven as if you collected the whole week. So either use the electronic uh, collection if it is not more than 5% uh, different uh, or use weekly sampling in uh, bigger enough units uh, that collect more than uh, 70 uh, urinary catheter days per month. Uh, and this is applicable for both uh, ICUs and ward. For the county analysis, county rate is calculated by dividing the number of county events over urinary catheter days and times this, this in 1000. And the rate is expressed per, uh, per 1000 urinary catheter days. The urinary catheter utilization ratio is to divide urinary catheter days by patient days. And both the rate and utilization can be uh, stratified by the number by, by, by the location, uh, ICU, different types of ICUs and different uh, ward. For the county SIR, as you see, we can calculate the using uh, dividing the observed county events over the expected county events. The observed county events are actually the county events that you detect during the surveillance period from the unit uh, um, planned for uh, surveillance. Uh, and the expected county urine is calculated uh, from the benchmark that you use. You can use local benchmark as MOH benchmark, GCC benchmark, or you can use even uh, NHSN benchmark. Whatever you, uh, uh, benchmark you use, uh, you will calculate the uh, standardized infection ratio, which, uh, which means uh, what, uh, the, uh, what our rate uh, uh, compared to the benchmark rate. Uh, and you give you this, uh, if it is more than one, means your uh, institution is higher than the benchmark. If it is one, means that your institution is equal to the benchmark. If it is lower than one, means your institution have lower rate uh, than the benchmark. A new metric in uh, county analysis is uh, enduling urinary catheter SUR, uh, standardized utilization ratio, and it is uh, calculated by dividing the observed catheter days over the expected catheter days. Again, the observed catheter days is the observed catheter days you collect during in the denominator you collect during the surveillance period and expected is collected from uh, the benchmark and uh, the interpretation the same one is equal above one is higher blue one uh, is lower thank you for listening to the county surveillance